Welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Join us every Wednesday to learn about the latest cutting edge developments in the real time communications industry. ClueCon Weekly is brought to you by Free Switch Solutions. Get support and professional services directly from the creators of the Free Switch open source project, solving your issues in the most efficient, stable, and scalable way possible. Get the Free Switch advantage. Visit freeswitch.com. Also brought to you by ClueCon the premier technology conference for developers by developers. Join us every summer in Chicago. ClueCon kicks off on Monday with our annual hackathon, The Coder Games, followed by three days of technology-rich presentations discussing telecom, WebRTC, and IoT from developers around the world. To learn more, visit cluecon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of ClueCon Weekly, where today is January, or not January, it is uh, March 14th. And our special guest today will be our very own Fred Mutisa. Now, uh, Fred had a, it was a very, very interesting story on how he actually came aboard and, and kind of did the hoops that he jumped through to get across the entire earth, you know, halfway across the earth just to uh, kind of make his presence known and his, 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 amazing abilities and what he could do and basically what he was how he started was basically he was uh catching catching fraud that's what he was doing he's like put you know catching uh people who are using sim boxes to uh skirt the the ugandan telecommunications company and it's basically uh he, he had a story to tell when he first met him at clucon last year 2017 and so what he's going to do is going to be giving us a, a run through on how to provision phones basically auto provision phones um, I, perhaps uh, it might be called zero config, and so we look, we look forward to hearing from him and what he has to say. And before we go further here, let's go to Kathleen for the news. Thanks, Josh. Hello, and thank you for joining us today on ClueCon Weekly with our gre- our guest Fred Mutisa from the Free Switch team. Uh, if you have any questions, you can. Um, Comment in the YouTube, HipChat, or IRC channels, and we'll try and answer them during the call. Mike Jarris from the FreeSwitch team will be speaking at ComCon in June. See what he has to say about the future of FreeSwitch and visit comcon.xyz or Z uh, for more information. KuCon will be earlier this year, <laughs> taking place from July 23rd to July 26th, and you can register right now on KuCon.com. Go out there, get registered, make sure you RSVP to all of our fantastic events. And you can take advantage of our March deal right now using the discount code CC2018 March Madness to get $400 off your registration. You have until the end of March to use that, so hurry up. Do not miss out. We are bringing back the boat tour as part of our awesome evening events at ClueCon. Voicetel last year uh, sponsored a wonderful boat tour where we got to go out and see the beautiful skyline in Chicago. So don't miss out. RSVP for that when you register to make sure your spot is saved. And basic training is back at KuCon 2018. The space is limited, so be sure to register ASAP. When you register for KuCon, you can go ahead and sign up for that training. You can visit the training page on KuCon.com for more information and to register. And FreeSwitch will offer virtual basic FreeSwitch training. If you'd like more information, you can email Sharon at FreeSwitch.com. And if you have any suggestions for the videos you'd like to see, please email us at marketing at cluecon.com. We'll continue to add instructional videos periodically, so make sure you subscribe to this channel. And as usual, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to this channel, and sign up for our mailing list to get these and even more fantastic news and announcements from the FreeSwitch team. And thanks for watching. Back to you, Josh. Well, thank you for the updates, Kathleen. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and move on into our next segment with uh, our very own Jersey Mike. How you doing, Jersey Mike? Good. Happy Pi Day. So Google has decided that we are going to create a new holiday, and we can celebrate by eating pie. But the holiday is actually based on the mathematical formula, which has you know changed the world. Um, But I'm here today to ask you a question about a community corner question. And that question is, I would like to dial a number 
after a conference has already started and a new participant to the conference. Is there any way to do this from the Virto communicator? Yeah, that's actually that's an excellent question here. The uh, when it comes to adding participants to your to your conference, it's not so much that it would take place via you know within Virto configuration, but it was actually you just put a couple lines in your DOM plan, get your DOM plan configured accordingly, and you can go ahead and just dial. Oh, let's see here. Let's ignore that. And so let us see here. Let's just do a, a brief little showcase on actually how this works out. And so we have this uh, Confluence page, Conference Ad Call Example, wherein you will find specifically the, the dial plan actions that you can go ahead and add into your dial plan to kind of make this happen. And so once you get that put in there properly, uh, config to your own specific yeah, configurations there, then you should be able to dial star one from within the conference. Yeah, command line real quick. So what I did was I went ahead and added from the uh, conferences. So I have here the uh, conference administrator, where basically I've added the bind digit action line, which allows me to dial star one. That will then go execute the ask for number extension. So we come on down here to the ask for number extension where we see that this extension will actually play get the digits that it's you're looking to dial from there it will go ahead and then pass you on to adding that call to a conference so when we take a look at that conference extension here we see that okay there's a little bit of processing and then that's this is the actual the, you know API line that you will actually add that user to conference. We also have an additional one. So that way, if you dial just a four digit, you see here, if you dial four digits, it will actually, you know, connect you to an extension locally to you. Or if you dial an 11 digit number, it will send the call out to a gateway. And so putting this into practice, now that we've got it all set up, I'll just go ahead and come on in as the administrator. This is basically administrator control to be able to add. Basically, it's administrator controls to be able to add something to the conference. So I'll hit uh, star one. So you're gonna you get you gonna add me to to thirty five hundred. Well, this is the this is I, this is locally on my own server. I'm kind of showcasing the, the dial out through. All right. Got distracted there. Hit the uh, timeout section. All right, so 1002. Let's just do 1002 and then hit pound. There you go. It's ringing my other local extension here. Hit OK and should add me right on in. There we go. Excellent. Now, alternatively, what also you can do, alternatively, what also you can do is dial a full 11 digit number to dial out through the gateway to get a hold of a, you know, PSTN user. So let's do that. So this is this is in specific to Verto, right? Oh, this can also be no, no, just no, regular just, bridge commands. It's not specific to Verto, no. This is it's all has to do with setting up your dial plan properly. And so there you have it. There's the outgoing uh, cell phone. And so with that, just uh, grab your just grab the proper dial plan extension from the from that uh, conference ad call example, get it uh, tweaked accordingly to how you've got your specific dial plan set up, and you should be able to just dial out, dial out extension users, or dial out gateways. And back to you, Mike. Um, I think you're muted. Oh, so it's really neat having that in the background, uh, having the dial plan. It's really neat seeing that and then getting the code examples. Um, yeah, yeah, it definitely works. So now I'm going to turn it over to Fred, and he's going to teach us um, something. Hi. Hi, Fred. How are you doing today? I'm good, Mike. How are you? Wonderful. So what do you have for us today? 
Uh, well, today um, I've been tasked to cover phone provisioning in free switch and basically that's what I'll be showcasing how you can provision phones so that basically you're doing zero touch uh, registration and uh, provisioning so that's basically what I'll be covering in the next few minutes okay well we very much look forward to the presentation all right thank you all right um once again, my name is Fred Mutesa, and I'm part of the FreeSwitch team. It's really a privilege to be part of the FreeSwitch community. Uh, today, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can provision a phone in FreeSwitch, and I'll be specifically covering a Cisco phone. And I have a fairly old phone with me. That is a Cisco phone that is 7960, uh, but it works. So nothing to be scared about i'll first of all explain my network diagram to show what what i'm actually talking about or what provisioning is just take a scenario if you have very many phones in your company for example you're a voip administrator and you you're supposed to provision phones over 500 or even beyond that you can't go on configuring or accessing each phone individually to put in the configuration and and have each phone register. Basically, you'll be running around the clock to have these configurations manually put in. Uh, free switch can help you do that. Or these phones, there is a way you can achieve this, whereby you have all your configurations in a central place and you push those configurations to the servers. Uh, in this network diagram, I have a free switch server that is that has been set up it is running up and running on port 5060 and then i have a router that in this case will be my gateway and it will also be my dhcp server and then i have a cisco phone that connects to my microtik router this cisco phone basically comes in out of the box connects to the router gets an ip and on top of that IP it receives from the router, the router will give it some more information. For example, the, the, the router will tell the Cisco phone that you are supposed to pick your configuration files from this TFTP server. So the router basically also informs the phone that you're going to pick your configurations from this TFTP server and it sends it the IP. When the phone receives the IP, of the TFTP server, it basically contacts the TFTP server and picks the configuration files. Now, in this case, since I'm looking at a Cisco phone, I'll first of all give you the prerequisites of the TFTP server. It runs on port 69, so if your TFTP server is running behind a firewall, you have to open that port. It's a UDP port. Uh, if you don't open that port, it means your phone won't be able to talk to your tftp server now my tftp server i've simply installed tftp software freely from the internet i've installed it on my windows laptop i can actually pop it up here All right, it's right here. So once you have your TFTP server, you have to configure the root directory. Uh, now, when you configure the root directory, you just create a path where we are going to put our files. That is the files that the phones will be pulling in. So once we have those files, once we create that path, we, we go on and get the Cisco images that contain the bootloader and then the configuration files and we put them into that directory you can freely get the cisco configuration files from the cisco software center or free switch actually uh, on our free switch page you can get a link where we have those files Okay, let me show you here. I 
I have these links here where where you can get the firmware of the Cisco phones. I'll just jump in on this link here to show you the firmware. It's actually right here. So once you have you, once you know the version of your phone, for example, mine is 7960 series. You just download the firmware that 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 will work on your phone. I basically downloaded the the highest, which is a uh, version 8.12.00 once you have that downloaded you open it up and you check the files once you have once you have these files you copy them into the root directory of your tftp server basically when your cisco phone loads it will Tell the TFTP server that it wants these files, and the TFTP server will basically push the files and give them to the phone. But on top of these files, there are files that we create manually. That is the configuration files. These files that we've downloaded are basically telling this phone that uh, it's 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 going to support SIP and uh, it should boot with that capability. Now the phone, the configuration files that we shall create manually will basically have the configuration that will enable the phone to register will tell the phone how many extensions it should own and then what passwords it will use and different parameters that you can modify if you want to see a sample configuration file of course we have one on our free switch confluence site uh you you can look at that sample file though i will open it in a separate window and explain it Yes, here. Before I actually go into the real file, how it looks, and this is the format that that those files have to be created in. We basically need two files. We have a file called zipdefault.cnf. This file contains all the common configurations that we need on all our phones. For example, if you want uh the time zone that will be displayed on your phone it will be put in a zip default dot cnf so that all your phones boot up and have the same parameters then we have a second file that is mac address specific so the format is basically zip and then mac address and then cnf so whenever a cisco phone boots up it will advertise or broadcast its mac address and it will tell the TFTP server that you send me this file with this name. And basically it, say, it says, send me a file with zip, my MAC address, .cnf. And the TFTP server will basically send those files. Of course, they contain the configuration details that you've, you've designed or you've configured. And, uh, and after that, the phone will boot up and implement those configurations. Let's look at a sample configuration file of. Uh, I'll pull in my notepad here. This is a sample zip default.cnf file. Uh, it basically we are basically telling the phone that you're using your firmware is version eight dash 12 dash 00, zero. and then we are telling it that your free switch box or your gateway or your pbx is this ip so you define the proxy and define the ip you can have multiple proxies here if if you have them but in this case i only have one server so i defined one ip then you go you proceed down and define the ip this is the ip so that your extensions will register on and then you have different parameters that are in this file by default when you check our, our free switch website you'll find all these parameters you can also set the time zone i've set it to east african time and uh, different different parameters you can have an outbound proxy and uh, many other configuration options then after having that file created you have to create one that is mac address specific 
how would you find the MAC address of your Cisco phone? You can go under each settings and look at the network configuration. I'll show you that shortly. But uh, something else I, I need to really show is that in my MicroTik router, this is specific to the MicroTik router, but depending on, depending on where, where you're doing the DHCP server, you have to tell the DHCP server to send options. I told you that uh, when, the, when the Cisco phone boots, it receives an IP from your DHCP server. Now we tell the DHCP server that on top of giving the DHCP IP, you have to send options. The options are 150. Option 150 is for TFTP server. So that is the option defines the IP for TFTP. Some, some phones, though, request for option 66. Option 66 is also for TFTP server. So to be on the safe side, I created both options in my router. And as a specification to the MicroTik router, instead of defining an IP in options, I had to change the IP to hexadecimal format. So taking you back to my diagram, the MicroTik router will send an IP, will give the phone a DHCP IP, and on top of that, it will tell, it, tell the phone that I have option 66 and option 150, which is the IP of my laptop. So the Cisco phone, it boots up, looks at the TFTP IP, which is the IP of my laptop, and request, sends a request to my TFTP server running on my laptop on UDP port 69 and tells it I need these files. And when it does that, the TFTP server will forward the files to the Cisco phone. And when the Cisco phone receives the files, it runs the configurations and pops up with whatever was configured in there. Okay, so I'm going to show you a real boot process on the TFTP server where you're going to see my phone send requests to the TFTP server. Much as you can't see my phone, but you'll be able to see to see the logs here. Let me first clear the logs and then restart my server. Sorry, you restart my phone, not my server. So it's rebooting now. So the first thing that happens, it will get an IP. When it gets an IP, you see requests coming in here on the console of the TFTP server. So you see requests are coming in here for these files. So it is sending a request for this particular file, and this is its MAC address. And once all these load completely, like you see that it has started and completed. The phone will basically pull in the configuration files and use them. I'll show you a photo shortly of what I see on this phone. So my phone has basically come up with the extensions. And because you can't see what I'm seeing, I've just taken a photo, which is right here. So you see extensions registered. I have 1004 and 1003, and uh, the phone label is free switch. Now, before I proceed to making test calls and all that stuff, let me show you where and how I configured these options in, in our configuration file. So those options that are extension specific are configured in here. Of course, you define the image version that you're running or the firmware version that you're running. And then you use the proxy address. You're telling the phone that if you want to register, go to this IP. And then you're defining each line on that phone. So the line one will have 1004 and the display name is 1004. The authentication name is 1004. And the password, which we which has to be defined in free switch, I'll show you that shortly. 
And then you do the same for line two, and then line three, and line four, and line five, and so on, depending on how many lines you want. But since free switch comes by default comes with 20 extensions that are in the range of 1000 from 1001 to 1000 to 1019 it's only these these extensions that will register hence if you look you to look at this picture here you can actually see that only these two have registered the rest down have x's which shows that the phone has picked them from your configuration file but it cannot register them because they don't exist on free switch now I'll, I'll i'll show you a confirmation on my free switch where i have so my password for registration or the default password is that exclamation mark one two three for exclamation mark and it's the same that i defined let's check the free switch console and see if we have registered phones and to check that you have to do show registrations so it will basically show us sorry i have to run this command again so that it displays well i have these phones registered 1004 and 1003 and they are coming from the ip of the cisco phone so i'll show you on my micro tick to confirm that this is actually the IP of the Microtik phone. When you go to IP under DHCP server, when you check the leases, you see the SIP phone or, or the Cisco phone with its SIP MAC address. It has an IP of 252. So when I go back here and show registrations, you can actually see that the request is coming in from 252. I have, of course, other extensions that I registered using a soft phone because I only had one, one Cisco phone. So I'll make a test call from the Cisco phone to my Zoipa, which is registered with 1002 and 1000, and then I answer the call. So I'm making a call right now from my Cisco phone on my desk here to 1002. And you see it's popping up. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? So it basically works. Remember, we've not logged into the Cisco phone at all. I have to end this call. Sorry. All right, done. So remember one thing, we have not, we have not touched the Cisco phone and we, we just connected it to our router and it picked up all the configurations it registered. And after registering, it it was able to make calls. So in short, that is how I thought I would I would um, demonstrate phone provisioning in free switch. But one thing to note is that your passwords for the extensions have to be configured. Otherwise, the Dell plan won't be able to handle the the, the extensions that are registered on your on your phone. I guess that's that will be all from me. So Fred, I've got questions. some questions for you. Hey, yes, Mike. So let's talk about security with provisioning because obviously um, a lot of a lot of tall fraud comes from phone provisioning and provisioning servers. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about the security here? All right, so um, the, w considering security, of course, the, the only way or one of the ways I would think of is that you have to have your FTP server uh, secured so that doesn't, it accepts requests from only, from only trusted IPs. So you, if you're provisioning phones, basically, you know the IPs of all your phones and those are the only IPs you should trust. Otherwise, you love phones sending requests from external networks and then they are able to register on your PBX. Well, and, and from the Microtik device, I mean, the TFTP server really is only listening on the LAN, right? Yeah, it's only listening on the LAN. And if I'm to show you, to demo for you that here, to show you, um, 
So I have two networks. One is the gateway that that um, that talks to the PBX, and then uh, 88.1 or slash 24. That network is internal. So someone outside my microtech network won't be able to send a request to the FTP server. So just from just from a topology standpoint, the security is drastically higher than something that would be like a unified provisioning server that's taking yep. requests. And you can't essentially it's not subject to the type of requests that were like uh, MAC address uh, uh, MAC address, you know, what do they call that as they uh, they just increase the MAC addresses and hopefully, you know, we'll hit it sooner or later. Yeah, and, and this thing is that um, some of this, this, this specific uh, configurations like passwords, extension passwords, they are MAC address specific. So a phone, a Cisco phone can't ask for configurations that, that are not in its file. So that file is MAC address specific and uh, it will only get whatever you've defined for it. Right, and so traditionally with a provisioning server, I guess the type of attacks we do, we commonly see are, you know, about a certain percentage of the MAC address is actually assigned to the hardware device or manufacturer. Yeah. And after that, it's just a matter of, you know, phone book injections where you're constantly just, or, you know, increasing the MAC addresses and hopefully you'll hit something and then all of a sudden you've got, you know, the keys to the castle. Yeah, I mean, as long as, as long as you're, FTP server is exposed, anyone can spoof and <laughs> send any requests. So you, you, the, the first part of security is securing the FTP server, which contains the sensitive information. Okay, and then I noticed just, just looking at your dial plan, you were using TCP. So do you want to just talk about that a little bit? Just using my dial plan? Uh, you're using TP. The phones are set to TCP. What's what's the reasoning behind that? Sorry, I, I need to understand. Like, uh, which Dell? Oh, the registration or the Dell plan? I'm a bit. Uh, oh, the registrations. Yeah. So the phones are. Oh, sorry. The phones. I are mean, I mean, the registration is uh has to do a handshake with the with the. With the PBX or with free switch, mm -hmm. because it has to be a stable connection. You wouldn't right. want it to be. You you don't you wouldn't want your phone to register and then go off. That registration has to be stable. That's why I preferred to use TCP because it it is a three way handshake. If a call goes through, then uh, for the voice that is the RTP. Of course, you wouldn't need TCP because it's a uh, it's a uh, the packets just go through and 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 you don't really need the handshake for that. Yeah. Okay, do we have any questions from the audience? I believe there's some in the chat component. MAC address canning and Bruce Fourier, Bruce Fourier, Bruce, brute force attacks is what was mentioned earlier. Um, <laughs> I think uh, brute force and the uh, MAC address scanning. I think that that whole issue would be if uh, your phones are running on public IPs and they're exposed. That's that's where the issue would come from. But uh, if you're doing this provision in your internet network, I think it will all go well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, Fred, for coming out today. And Josh, back to you. You're welcome, Mike. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, Jersey Mike and Fred Matista, for that uh, quite uh, quite informative on how to actually get your phones provisioned through, you know, like a zero config type operation. How convenient. So I think that's pretty much going to bring us to a close for this week's episode. Uh, do stand by for next week. We have a gentleman by the name of Alexandre. Uh, Gouliard, Alexandre Gouliard with uh, WebRTC by DrAlex.com. He's going to give us uh, uh, give us a presentation on what his latest is with uh, WebRTC affairs. And I hear uh, with something something to do with uh, probably a software called Kite. Be interesting. And uh, I guess that'll do it. Do uh, do keep in mind we've got the ClueCon 
2018 coming up here towards the end of July. So be sure to get your tickets purchased. And with that, we say have a good week and we will see you next Wednesday. You've been watching Tucon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central. Keep up with the latest happenings by subscribing to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or visit us at freeswitch.com.